Curious about the new Pipelines Designer released in beta in September 2023? <laughs> Me too! Welcome to QuickBase Junkie. I help QuickBase builders learn fast to deliver more. I've only used it once, so we're gonna dive into that use case and explore what's changed. I was building a pipeline for a client of mine, and I decided to go ahead and use the new Pipelines Designer. I've built a much simplified version of the problem I was solving in my tutorial app here. It involves two tables, the measurements table, which allows for the logging of five different measurements labeled A, B, C, D, and E. And then I've got a formula field that identifies the max measure in terms of the label. So that's what this calculates here, that max measure. So here I've got C, that is the most filled out. If I were to fill out D with another measure and click off, I would get D as my max, regardless of which one has the higher value. But what I need is for that to connect to a parent table of multipliers. So based on that max measure, here it would be D, I need that multiplier of 1.055. But that is a relationship. So I built a pipeline to look up that matching measure on the multipliers table so that it would create that relationship. There's a number of different ways to achieve this, but I decided to build a pipeline. So let's do that now. Let's jump into pipelines and build out the initial pipeline that I built. And then I decided to make some modifications and the new designer allowed us to make those modifications much easier. When we create that new pipeline, we'll get this pop-up asking if we want to use the beta. We can try it out. I believe at some point soon they will be changing this to the default experience. Already you can see a vast difference from the original designer. There's actually a toggle switch up here where we can flip back and forth between the old and new designer. This is the old or legacy designer. And this is the new designer, which has this sort of unlimited canvas, which is kind of cool. So we'll start first that when that record is created, in our measurements table, we're going to need both the calculated max measure and then the related multiplier. That's the field we'll be filling out later. Add steps rather than dragging and dropping. We'll click on these little plus signs. So for our next step, we're going to search back in that quick base channel. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Choose our search. And we'll be searching our multipliers table. We'll need the measure because that's what we're going to compare. And in this case, we only need one. We're only going to return one, so no need for it to bother looking for any others. But the important part here is our filter. We want to make sure that that measure equals from the original trigger, we'll choose that max measure calculated. So that way when it equals C, we want the C to be the measure that it returns. The information for. So for the record that it returns, what do we want to do? Back in the QuickBase channel, we want to update the record. It's asking for a step here. We want that first trigger record. What's what we're going to update? And we'll add our field that we're going to edit. And that is our related multiplier. And this is going to come from our search. And that is the record ID. That's that parent record ID that we now need to fill in that it found for the max record. Perfect. Few things I'll point out here. We can now modify, so update record with a related multiplier. So we can give those custom names here. We can also add a note. Fantastic. Now I can explain things, show the note, I can also collapse these steps if I want to see everything in a very tight, tight fashion, which is great. You will notice a few things. This does mention three of 26 steps. Use 26 steps is the maximum in the current pipeline. And so uh, I believe they're going to increase that, but in order to sort of toggle back and forth between the old and the new, you really do uh, still need to have that consistency between the two different types of designers. So this is how I built the pipeline initially. So let's turn it on, create a new, measure, give it a value here, and we will save and keep working on our pipeline. Since it's on, we now see that it was triggered. This activity is located directly in the pipeline, which is nice. 
pipeline has finished. While I'm here, I'll point out a few more things under this menu. We've got what we had before, refresh schemas, uh, but we have new information. View last run, the activity log, export it to the YAML. Actually pop up that screen right here containing the YAML. Super convenient, we can duplicate um, or toggle back to the legacy builder. And then under the settings, this one's a little hidden, uh, under this eye icon, this we can actually give it its name and tags, etc. You can view the stats all here within the designer, which is pretty convenient. All right, so then that did run. We can go back to our record and refresh. And there we go. It has updated that relationship to the multipliers table and it is bringing in that value from the multiplier as a lookup field. What I realized after I built this sort of basic pipeline, I needed to add some more features. I wanted to add a condition that basically says only update that relationship if it wasn't already established to begin with. So to do that in the new designer, I can actually add or insert steps in between. So here I'm going to choose a condition where it says only if the triggered record that was created that calculated measure, right, that would be A, B, C, D, is not equal to, and will need to be max measure, which I do not have yet. So I'll need to add that into my trigger step. So our max measure, add it in here, give it a second. So it does not equal the max measure, right? So only if it doesn't equal the max measure, right? They haven't already been set equal to each other, do the work. So if they do not equal, so if the condition is true, then I want to do these things. I can take these little handles on the left and drag them into other locations. What? No way. So I can take all of my work here and drag it to another location within the designer. And I don't have to rebuild those steps. I could insert and rebuild. Wow. How amazing is that? Even if you're working on an older pipeline, you can literally toggle back and forth if you prefer building in the older pipeline and then toggle back after you've made those changes, which is really, really awesome. So let's go ahead and go back to the new designer. What you do want to be careful of, especially if this is a complex one, that the fields and references are still lining up where you expect them to. So one of the things you can see in here, if we click on these little code icons, we can actually switch to code and view the sort of detail behind the, the pretty visual user interface. Uh, we can write Jinja if we need to write the Jinja, we can write that directly in here. Something I noticed is kind of cool if you're writing uh, things out and start writing the field, it will pop up a list of those fields, which is kind of handy. Well, we don't actually want that here. But if you do move things around, just whoop, make sure that you don't delete them, but also make sure that those references haven't changed. In future, I also do believe they will be changing the way that fields are referenced. So that way, if you do move them around, you don't break any of the step notation, which will eventually be going away. After I did this, I thought, gee, there's just one more thing I want to do. I actually want to change the trigger because this trigger right now is only when the record is created. But let's say someone goes in and modifies what that ABCD measure is, and now there's a new max. What I really want here is a step called on new event. So I can literally just delete this. You can't add a trigger before it because there's already a trigger, but I can delete my trigger and now add in a new trigger it allows me to pull in all these triggers because I don't have one yet. So I'll choose that on new event. The table is going to be my measurements table again. I will still need the related multiplier and our max calculated measure. We're not triggering on any field, but rather we want to trigger on A, B, C, D, or E changing. On add record, yes. On modify record, yes. Still don't need a filter here. We'll check this one. This should have kept the connection. Let's double check. Ah, I did not have max measure. Pop that in. 
and now it's locating it here. Since I'm replacing that step A, it, it's going to notice it once it's there, but if it's not there, it can't find it. Step B, this all looks good, no errors. Filters are good, loop is good. All right, let's turn this back on, head back to our field here, and let's change one of these, uh, add a value here. Now they do not match. Save and keep working. Watch. And we got an error. So it says I've got a problem with the loop item in here. Ah, this came disconnected. So we'll just come in and let's see here. This was for the new measure. So step A. So on the new event, it used to be on new record. So that needed to be selected again. So I'll turn that back on and run this one more time. Let's go ahead and make it E. Watch it run. Finish with no errors. So we'll refresh. And there it So quickly I can show you, you can jump around, kind of get the full end-to-end -end view. Uh, you can even collapse and expand these uh, in that view. There's your demo on the new Pipelines Designer Beta. I'm sure there are more features, updates, capabilities that I didn't explore here, but if you're curious, those are the basics to get you going. Enjoy. If you liked this video, there's a whole lot more going on over at quickbasejunkie.com slash training. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the first lesson. If you found this video helpful, let me know. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Bye for now.